gonna get it just where you need to every time, but if you rig it right, you can get it back in there. Definitely one of my favorite ways to fish in the summer. You can find you a little corner with some redfish or some snook. It's so easy. Hey everybody, Captain CA here from Flats Class YouTube. I'm going to bring you into the studio. We're going to talk about a technique or a tactic, I should say, that is very effective in the summertime. This tactic is something we've been promoting pretty heavily this past couple of weeks, but a lot of you've got some questions about the lures that you can employ to do this technique. So without further ado, let's go back inside here in the studio, cool off a little bit, and let me share with you the top four or five baits that'll do this for you. Flats class fanatics. Uh, this is something um, for me that is very effective once summer is here with the higher tide phases that I've been talking about so much. The fact that we're all trying to beat the heat uh, and so are the fish. So you're fishing lots of shady zones. Um, you're fishing deeper water in some cases but some of the best ways to target fish, uh, especially during the daylight hours, is fishing docks uh, that have good or max current flow and fishing what I'm gonna say, mangrove shorelines on outside barrier islands where there's plenty of cool incoming water. Um, if, you're, if you're around some bigger creeks that see good current flow, especially on the incoming tide that brings cooler water into them. And it seems almost as if the fish are waiting for that incoming water to be a little bit cooler. This is an extremely effective technique. It doesn't really matter whether you're throwing spinning gear or casting gear, sliding it up in there. As long as you can make that lure have, what I'm gonna say, good penetration. Get up underneath there like three, four skips so that it, it gets next to that root mangrove root wall. That's where you want to live with these baits. If it's a dock, you want to find those lower docks that offer the most shade where you can slide that bait, just slide it right under there and it goes and falls down slow. And then the most important thing is to give the bait or the lure time to fall so that it calls a fish in from a distance because that fish might be sitting tucked back in there next to a piling on a dock system and he sees the, the silhouette of the bait skipping across the surface and then he sees it slowly start to fall and then he'll start to move to it. As he moves to it, if you hesitate that second and a half that you need to, it then starts to move out and he immediately thinks because he moved to it that it's trying to get away and he's a lot more willing to chase it out from underneath the trees and you catch them. You find this a lot, or I do, with certain clients that I trust skipping lures and they're doing it with spinning gear where they cast in there and by the time they get the, the bail closed and their hand on the reel and start to move it, that allowed enough time for it to fall and all of a sudden you'll see four and five snook come out or a couple of redfish come out. And that's where I really target those those, those fish a ton are under those mangrove limbs. So baits that work well for this, that's what this was all about. You know, you saw, um, before we got to the intro, uh, I, I shot a little bit of that. Hey, this is what we're going to do today. Blah, 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 blah. And you could see how you're skipping under the limbs. The fish feel very comfortable under there, but it's important to have a lure that will do it with ease so that you're not trying to throw some small little bait up underneath there that has a tough time skipping. So some of my favorites, 
uh, all time, especially like docks where there's lots of current, I can get away with a jig head or something like that, would be like these five inch diesel minnows. Flat sided, some solid weight. If I just weighed this one bait, it probably wells, weighs way over a quarter of an ounce, just the bait itself. You put an eighth or a three sixteenths jig head on this and boy, will it skip unbelievably well. One of my favorites, uh, definitely a go-to. Another one that I like to use that's not quite as popular with maybe some of you, the inshore crowd, but it's popular with the bass crowd, is to take the Z-Man Goat or the Billy Goat, okay? It's these types of baits, very crustacean-like. It's crawl-like if, if you're a bass guy. Let me not cover the label there. But these baits um, have two little boot tails that give it a lot of action, but you'll notice that nice flat-sided bait. Uh, again, like a coin, like a shell, and you can skip it in there and they make you look good. It's easy to cast these. These can be rigged um, both on uh, a jig head, like this weedless one, or you can rig them on these, these hooks such as this one here, which is the five aught quarter ounce, or you can go three sixteenths, and you can get them well, well underneath the mangrove limbs or the docks. They do a great job. The goat would definitely be another go-to for me. Uh, another one that you've seen us do, in fact, we've got a television show coming up on this. Uh, we're fished down there in 10,000 islands close to uh, the Everglades, and we fished with Rob, Captain Rob Walzak, and had some incredible action on these four inch unrigged mullatrons. Now these baits, again, very dense, got a wedge tail. You can skip them back in there. And then they have, you know, because this Elastec is so stretchy, um, it floats. So when I would rig them on an unrigged, you know, EWG, I could still skip them in there and then they'd float. I could swim them out. They look like finger mullets swimming underneath the tree limbs. I also threw it in a lot of the tree, tree limbs, if you will, that were bare, that just, they were just out there. It was just a bunch of branches and the, the snapper and the redfish and some of the smaller snook would just lay in that type of cover. And it was so easy to catch them on these mullatrons. Another fantastic bait. Uh, one that you don't think of if you know you have a shoreline or a dock system that's a little shallower, may have different pieces of structure nearby like oyster and whatnot. And you know there's redfish and black drum there. And that's to take a kicker crabs. So I'll take these kicker crabs and I'll rig them usually on like more of a football style lightweight jig head. And again, because it has that flat sided body, does a really good job of boom, slide it right up underneath that dock let it sit down there, let it go all the way to the bottom, and then reel a little bit, drop it, reel a little bit, drop it. And that arm, that articulating arm, just kind of swings around up there. And it's, it's almost a guarantee to catch redfish on that crab bait. It does a really good job. Uh, one you've seen here recently where I've been throwing a lot of casting gear with it. Uh, it actually is the bait of the month at Flat Scots University right now, and that is the jerk shads, both the four and the five inch. Uh, the five inch is a little heavier and it skips a little better for me. Uh, I usually rig this on an EWG, whether it's rigged or unrigged, because this bait has a little weight with, weight with it because it is scented, so there's oil in it. Uh, so it does a very, very good job. Again, Elastec has a nice slow fall, almost a suspending feel. And then the action is so side to side, it takes it a little longer to get out of that shade. And by staying in that shade for a long period of time, it opens up opportunity for predators to want to eat it. And then this was a trailer that came on the scene last year at ICAST. Uh, and I found a use for it because it skips extremely well. It's called the Chatter Spike. Now, it was designed to be on a chatter bait, uh, but I have found because of its weight and because of its unique shape, it is a great darting action type of skipping bait. Most of the weight of this bait is forward. It has nice flat sides and it does a fantastic job of skipping. Had a lot of people ask me about it at Flatscoss University and with some of the, the guys here on YouTube, they're like, hey, 
have you ever tried that chatter spike? And a lot of them think that I'm using it almost like a sight fishing bait, but I really don't do that. Even though you could use it that way because the head will go down on a jig head and that tail just kind of swings, like a, almost like a jerk shad that you're finesse fishing, but it works great for a skipping type lure. So if you take a couple of these baits, what did I show you, five or six of them here? If you take some of these baits with you, and start practicing with a spinning rod, or even if you want to try to practice with a casting rod, you know, don't put as much line on it. That's one of the pro tips that I will be sharing with Flats Class University soon. You'll be able to slide these baits up into those shady zones. And by doing so in this type of heat that you're going to experience both in July and August, you're going to catch a lot of fish around docks with max flow and around mangrove shorelines during the incoming tides. You're going to catch fish under the trees. So think shade, think cool. Think about how you would like to be uh, in some AC because that water that sits up underneath these shady zones is just a little bit cooler for these fish and they feel really good in there. And right now with these big high tides, it allows them to be in there. So that's where they're at. If you're fishing a zone and you're not seeing a lot of bait and all of a sudden you come down a mangrove shoreline and you see a bunch of mullet come out from underneath the limbs, there's a good chance that zone in there is holding some predator fish as well. So start those skipping baits getting back in there and I think you're gonna be surprised how many fish you catch. All right, that's all I've got for you this week. Until next time, keep those rods bent and I'll keep the videos coming here at Flat Scots YouTube.